Hello, everyone. I'm Harvey Brownstone, and today we're celebrating one of Hollywood's most popular buxom blonde bombshells of the 50s and 60s, Joy Lansing. She was often referred to as the Marilyn Monroe of television because of her beauty, sparkling personality, and her musical and comedic talent. She appeared in classic movies, including Easter Parade, Singing in the Rain, Touch of Evil, Marriage on the Rocks, Queen of Outer Space, and Bigfoot. On TV, she appeared in I Love Lucy, The Jack Benny Show, Perry Mason, Maverick, and she had recurring roles on The Bob Cummings Show and The Beverly Hillbillies. And if you're a fan of the Superman TV show, Joy Lansing's character was the one who beat out Lois Lane to marry Superman in the 1958 episode entitled Superman's Wife. She also had a very successful Las Vegas nightclub act. Miss Lansing tragically succumbed to cancer in 1972 when she was only 43 years old. Our guest was not only Joy Lansing's best friend, constant companion and caregiver for the last three years of her life, she was her lover. In 2014, she released a poignant and heartbreaking book entitled Joy Lansing, A Body to Die For. I'm pleased to welcome Alexis Hunter to our show. Alexis, thank you so much for being here. Oh, Harvey, so nice to be here. I'm thrilled. Thank you. Alex, back in 1969, you were a 21-year-old aspiring actress by the name of Nancy Hunter when you met Joy Lansing on the set of Bigfoot. But you had been a big fan of hers long before that, correct? Absolutely. I remember when I was a kid just rushing home to see to watch her on the Bob Cummings show. How soon after meeting Joy did the two of you fall in love? Oh, my God. It wasn't that long, actually. I think we fell in love at Schwab's <laughs> after shooting all night because uh, it was such a low budget film. We. You know, we went to Schwab's and we talked and talked and talked all night long. And it was it just, we connected. It was so amazing. Now, Joy had three husbands and she was rumored to have had relationships with Frank Sinatra and Sid Caesar. Everyone assumed she was straight. Am I correct that you were the only woman that she had a relationship with? Yes, that's true. That's true. Joy's husband, Stan Todd, was a constant presence in the relationship. Wasn't that uncomfortable for you? Not really, not really. Stan was an okay guy, and he was important to her. He was like a father image, and and so, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't perfect having him there, but it was especially when she was ill. He was very helpful. Was Stan aware of your true relationship with Joy? No. No, his ego, his ego was too big, thinking that uh, no one, I mean, Joy was uh, very popular with men, and she, she dated quite a few really important uh, men in, during that time, and no one would ever imagine that she would be with a woman. Well, even though you were clearly the most important person in Joy's life, your relationship as lovers was a well-kept secret in order to preserve Joy's reputation. She introduced you to everyone as her sister, Rachel. How did yes. you feel about your relationship being kept so hidden? Uh, I was just thrilled to be with her, Harvey. I didn't care. I mean, uh, during that time, as you know, things were... Uh, had to be hidden. Everyone was closeted because it was illegal. And it, number one, and, and, and it would have destroyed her career. So you do what you have to do. I mean, so many people uh, were closeted during that time. You wrote that Joy was a victim of the Hollywood casting couch because many Hollywood big shots expected sexual favors from her. And this was very damaging to her self-esteem. And you even mentioned that Marilyn Monroe once came on to Joy. I was really shocked to read that. Yeah, she did. In fact, she asked, uh, they, they knew each other casually. And one day, uh, Marilyn asked her to go to Palm Springs with her. And Joy got nervous and just, you know totally chickened out. She, she wouldn't go. 
Is there any chance that Joy misunderstood that it wasn't a, a sexual come on? It was just, uh, let's go to Palm Springs for a uh, little break? Joy, Joy said it made her very nervous. So I don't, I don't know. I, I wasn't there. So I, I don't know, you know, if, if there was innuendo or, or how she was approached, but it, it made Joy nervous. Do you think that being treated like a sex symbol was the cause of her alcohol and substance abuse problem and her depression? I don't know if that was, I, I, she went into terrible depression when her grandfather died. He was the most important person in her life. And, and Stan was the substitute for the grandfather. She just, she went into depression. And I also, Harvey, think that she, uh, the cancer that she had uh, was, happening and affecting her hormonally and caused depression. That That's just my take on it. Well, I wonder whether part of Joy's emotional problems stemmed from having to keep your relationship a secret. I don't, th- we were, we were just so happy to be together. I don't, I don't think she was really nervous about it or upset about it. We just, we were just like two kids, just enjoying having the relationship and and just being alive. So we never, we never did, we weren't uptight about it, actually. I mean, it would have been nice to be able to shout it from the rooftop, but we couldn't. Alex, I want to read something to you that you wrote in the book. You said, I was determined to do everything in my power to prove to Joy that someone loved her unconditionally. I wanted to make up for all the hurt and sadness that had pushed her into bottles of pills and alcohol. I thought this was a battle we could fight together and that if she felt enough love, her demons would leave her troubled mind and heart. Alex, do you think you had what they call a rescue personality at that time? (sighs) I was 21 years old and I don't know if it was a rescue personality or I just was so in love with this woman. I would have done anything. And I just wanted her to feel loved and feel that love for who she was, not the blonde bombshell, not the sex symbol, not the movie star, but the sweet, wonderful person that joy was and, and the real joy, you know, I was very moved by something else that you wrote. You said, Joy wasn't in control. The combination of alcohol and pills had a hideous effect on her mind and body. Her depression and insomnia had the potential of being a lethal combination. And knowing this, I learned how to take care of her. Alex, you were only 21 years old and you dealt with some very difficult and frightening situations, including one time when Joy threatened to jump off a balcony. How did you learn what to do in those situations? Just trial and error. I learned through watching her go through these things that she couldn't, she had to be taking some of it. So I learned how to take her capsules apart and put gelatin in them so that she tapered off so she wouldn't OD. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I was just maybe guided on how to do it. I don't know. It's just, I think when something or someone is so important to you, you do what you have to do. But it must have been exhausting. Uh, it, there were times when it was really, really tough. Really tough. I mean, watching someone you love, uh, so messed up. And just... It it was just really hard. You described Joy several times in the book as a woman child. Why? Because she was a little girl. She basically was, you know, she was so innocent. She was not, she was not, oh God, it's hard to explain. She, she, you know how people uh, think of Monroe as being, you know, sort of childlike and, and little girl. Joy was very much like that. Vulnerable. Totally vulnerable, totally, and innocent. She was really very innocent. Uh, she, she was. She wasn't jaded. She. 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 I don't think I ever heard her say one nasty thing about anyone. She just was so full of love. Uh, just, she was wonderful. 
one of the most shocking things about your book, Alex, is the fact that Joy was so badly mistreated by the medical profession. She had multiple liquid silicone injections in her breasts and her derriere to maintain her sex symbol image. She was also given estrogen, which greatly contributed to the breast and ovarian cancer she developed. It's heartbreaking that this woman was basically killed by incompetent doctors. Isn't that right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I would, I would take, I mean, she was having problems and I'd take her to doctors and the, the doctors would say, oh, hold on just a second. And a few minutes later, they come back with their buddies. They just, you know, they were more interested in her persona, the sex symbol, the beautiful woman, not, not her problems, not her health problems. And uh, the doctor, she went to a doctor and said, I can't grow old because I, I need to work. And, and in Hollywood, once you hit 40, forget it. And so uh, he said, okay, here you go. And he gave her an open-ended prescription for estrogen, which basically was like gasoline on the fire, you know, with the cancer. And Alex, you actually allowed the doctor to give you a silicone injection as well. Why? Yes. Stupid. <laughs> That's all I can say is stupid. You know, I paid for that stupid mistake. I mean, I was with Joy. We were in New York and she went to uh, the doctor who, who had given her some, I mean, I don't know how many doctors gave her injections, but this guy, Benito Rich, I, I'll never forget his name. He, he said, Oh, uh, you know, why don't you have, uh, you know, just an injection? And and I just blithely went along with it, and I thought, oh, okay. And uh, my God, it was it was scary, awful. I mean, I knew while it was happening that that this was probably the biggest mistake of my life, and it was. And I paid dearly. Now, I don't want to give our viewers the impression that your book is all about the sad things that happened. There were a lot of wonderful experiences, too. For example, you and Joy got to see Elvis Presley in concert at the Las Vegas Hilton, and you met him backstage after the show, and Elvis actually kissed you. Please yes. tell us <laughs> about that experience. Oh, my God, that was, that was so cool. This was when Elvis was still absolutely gorgeous. I mean, gorgeous. You know, and... Oh, uh, we went backstage and he was so charming. I mean, he stopped to talk to us. And when we were ready to leave, he, he kissed us both goodbye. And, and I don't mean on the cheek either. It was wonderful. You know, what a guy. I mean, he was absolutely beautiful. I love the way you described his kiss as a gentle lightning bolt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, can you imagine Harvey having Elvis kiss you? No, but I can would you go for it? I think you could. <laughs> I think you would. You also got to meet Frank Sinatra at Jilly's restaurant in Palm Springs. What was that right. like? It was kind of weird. It was it was strange because he wasn't super friendly. I mean, he was okay. And I I knew too much about him from joy, you know, and and, I mean, he was pleasant. He, he just was not Mr. Personality. He was, you know, kind of just okay. But, it, it, you know, I was much more impressed with Elvis. Thank you very much. You say you knew too much about him from Joy. What did Joy tell you about Frank Sinatra that made you a little <laughs> leery of him? <laughs> that he was so moody. He was so depressed. That's why they ended up not seeing each other anymore just really really moody she said he would have these crying jags he was just really i spe i think i can't remember who one of his best friends died i can't remember which one it was and after that he went into terrible terrible depression I, i'm i'm not making light of it because you know depression's awful but uh it it was destructive to their relationship that's the only thing. Another, her demons too. So, Yes. Uh, another surprising thing I learned from your book was that Lucille Ball wanted to put Joy under contract, but her husband wouldn't let her do it. Did, did you ever find out why? Yeah. He, well, he said to her, you're too good for this. Too good for this. Do you believe that? I mean, having Lucille Ball 
she recognized how great Joy was and how Joy was really a comedian. I mean, she could, you know, you know lay out those straight lines, you know, and, and played totally deadpan. And she was funny. She was totally funny. And Lucille Ball saw that and, and wanted, to, wanted to really promote her. And Stan was just like, oh, no, you're too good for this. You know, those bigger fish to fry. And so he killed her career, basically. Stan, Stan was a great friend, but a terrible husband and an even worse manager. He just, he didn't know what the hell he was doing, actually. It sure sounds like it. Do you think that because Joy Lansing was seen as a blonde bombshell, that she was underappreciated as an actress? Oh, absolutely. I mean, she was typecast. Totally. I mean, she was the eye candy. She was uh, the the babe. Whenever they needed a sexy woman, they would call Joy. You know, she Joy was like the Monroe of television. She she was on a, a lot of your audience. I don't know if they know that during that time there were only three channels. You know, ABC, NBC, and CBS, and she was on all of them at one time or another. She did over 100 TV shows. You described her as a victim of her own beauty. What did you mean by that? A lot of people were hesitant to be friends with her. Women, a lot of, she didn't have very many female friends because they were jealous or insecure around her because she, honey, she was the most, uh, you see her photos, she was much more beautiful than her photos. She was absolutely magnificent. And people are intimidated. And and men, unfortunately, saw her as a, you know, a sex object. So if she hadn't been quite so pretty or quite so sexy, her life might not have been so difficult. So really, it's it's like a perfect storm. She was a victim of her own beauty in Hollywood because she wasn't really taken seriously as an actress and she was a victim of her own beauty in terms of her health because no doctor took her seriously. She had all these serious symptoms, excessive bleeding, abdominal pain, but every doctor just wanted to date her. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the tragedy. I mean, her beauty killed her, Harvey. And it's, 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 it's so sad. I mean, she was only 43 years old. It really is a tragedy. I, Alex, you wrote this about your frame of mind. Once you knew that Joy was fatally ill, you said, I had no interest in going anywhere without her, especially now that every second of every minute of every hour of every day was precious to me. Even if I tried not to think of it, I knew I had to live a lifetime with her one day at a time for whatever time she had left on this earth. Alex, that's so incredibly moving and poignant. You've perfectly expressed how we all feel when our time with a loved one is limited. Where did you learn to write like that? I don't know. I, th- I think I was just inspired, inspired by joy. And, and just, I wanted to tell people who she was and and inspire people to be themselves, be authentic, be real, you know, and and be proud of who you are, whether you're gay, straight, whatever, just be proud. Well, I wanna mention that Joy passed away in 1972. Your book came out in 2014. You said that you wrote the book for three reasons. Number one, to show the dangers of using silicone injections. Number two, to show the tragedy of Joy's life due to her vulnerability and fragile self-image. And number three, to celebrate your love story with Joy and encourage young people to be their true, authentic selves. So my question to you, Alex, is why did you wait so long to write the book? Well, I wasn't even going to write the book, Harvey. I I was having health issues at at probably from around 2004 till 2008 or nine. And, and I was, I had a lot of health issues and I reached out to Joy's stepdaughter whom I had known, you know, 
kind of when Joy and I were together. And when you're you know, when you're stuck in bed or in a wheelchair, you, you get on the phone. <laughs> At least I did. And so I talked to her, and she kept saying every day. She said, "You know, while you're there, you know, waiting to have surgery, uh, why don't you write a book?" And I didn't know she knew about our relationship. I, you know, and so I kept thinking, "What the hell am I going to tell? What kind of book am I going to write?" We went to, for lunch. Well, I did that anyway. <laughs> But, you know, it's just like I didn't know. And and I finally, after her you know, basically nagging me day after day, I finally just, I said, Leslie, do you understand what my relationship was? And she said, yeah, you guys were together. You were lovers. And I just, I couldn't believe that she knew. Joy had told her. And I didn't know she had told her. And... I mean, Joy thought that it was the berry. She thought it was so cool having having a girlfriend. And so Leslie knew. And so that's why I wrote it. She she said, well, you know, while you're in bed, you know, right. So I did. And then after that, I realized that it was an important thing to do. I I want people to be more compassionate and more understanding. And I want to help kids. One thing that was so great, Harvey, I don't know if I told you, is my book was in the curriculum of a local high school. And I, I, I loved it. For seniors, they were um, uh, IB kids, international baccalaureates. So they were sharp. They were seniors. They were mature enough to, to read my book. And I loved it. They had to write a paper. It was like a term paper. And I would go in and talk to them. And they could ask me any question they wanted. And some of the kids actually, they went to their teacher and said that because of my book, they felt secure enough and strong enough to come out. And they did. And, you know, they, they weren't afraid anymore. And, and, more, and the kids were more compassionate toward uh, their uh, schoolmates, some of them who were gay. And if I could, you know, I would love to do more of that, Harvey. I would love to talk to more kids and, and help them because there's so many, so many young people who are thrown out of their homes because they're gay. You know, their parents are religious or whatever, hang-ups. It destroys these kids' lives. And, you know, if I could help a kid, you know, I have... I'm on a soapbox about silicone because they're still doing it and more so, you know, than before and uh, to help kids, you know, just to stop bullying. If Joy were alive today, do you think she would have come out of the closet as gay or bisexual? I think she would have. I think she, she was very proud of our relationship and proud to be with me. And I think she would have. I, I, in fact, in fact, in the book, I, I talked about we were in a shoe store and I mean, she just thought that this was, I don't know if it was something new and different or exciting to her, but uh, I'm just walking around and suddenly she lays a lip lock on me in the shoe store and I fell to the ground. I was just totally freaked out, but she thought that was fun. So, so I think she probably would have, I think she probably would have been very proud to come out. And, 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 you know, be with me. You wrote in the book that by dying so young, Joy was spared the anguish of getting older and losing her status as a sex symbol. Do you think she would have had difficulties coping with getting older? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's really sad. You know, she was her image in her head. You know, she was the sex symbol, the beautiful woman and, I think that it would have been tragic for her. I mean, she was starting to get nervous about, oh, in fact, we went to a plastic surgeon and he said, you don't have any lines in your face. There's nothing I can do. But she was starting to get nervous because she was 40. You know, she was 40, you know, expiration date, you know, so. How do you think Joy would want to be remembered by the public? As, as a serious actress, you know, and uh, comedian, and uh, as 
a good person, a kind person. I think what was really fascinating about her is that she was sexy, but she was also a nice girl. She was always dignified. Oh, yeah, she was. She was not trashy. That was one thing that was important to her. She was always a lady. I mean, no matter how sexy she was or whatever, she was always uh, elegant, you know, not, not, not cheap. She it was not cheap sex. Do you think Joy would approve of your book? I think so. Definitely. I think so. Because it's an homage to her. It's a love story. You know, and it's not, it, and it's important for your viewers to know that she, that the, the book is not a tell all, you know, sure. I talk about certain things, but it's all out of love for her. I mean, it's all, it's a love story. I understand that a mini series is being created from your book. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't stand it. Uh, Vincent DeSalvo is a dynamite guy and wonderful producer. And he read the book and he, and he is working with Joe Doherty. Joe uh, was one of the producers and writers for 30 something. I don't know if you ever saw that years ago and he's brilliant. Joe was doing the screenplay. And so Vincent is going to pitch it to uh, like Netflix and Hulu. And I think the timing's perfect. I think it's absolutely perfect for, um, for this type of miniseries. It'll probably be about, I think probably about six episodes because there's so much, so many things that happened in the book. It is, I mean, it's just, uh, we had so many adventures and I, I want your listeners to know that it isn't a total downer. You know, I'm the way I wrote it was, you know, I interspersed happy times with, you know, not so happy times, but it, it's a joyous, it's a joyous book. It's not, it's not a total uh, bummer. Oh, not at all. And I think I've said that it's absolutely not a totally sad book. I wondered whether you have in your mind somebody that you think should portray Joy in the miniseries. Oh, my God. At first, I thought Charlize Theron. I thought, in fact, what's, what's interesting, Harvey, is her birthday is August 7th the same day, two years after Joy died. I think she was born in 74. I think Charlize is absolutely exquisite. And then I also thought, I mean, Jessica Chastain could play her. You know, I think she could. What do you think? I think Jessica Chastain would be wonderful. I think Jennifer Lawrence would be really great. Yeah, I thought Jennifer Lawrence could play me because she's, uh, she's younger. Well, that was going to be my next question. Who do you think yeah. should play you? I think Jennifer Lawrence could. I think she'd be great. I don't. I don't know a lot of the the up and coming uh, female leads, but it, they're great parts for women. Unbelievable. I mean, there's so many different aspects to it. Now, one of the nurses at the hospital named D told mm -hmm. you to be strong and to become the woman that Joy would have been proud of. Do you yes. think you've done that, Alex? I've done the best I can. I, I'm, I've, I've tried to be someone that Joy would be proud of, really. Have you managed to have a happy life even though you lost the love of your life? Well, it's kind of been uh, kind of downhill. <laughs> I mean, when you, when, when, you, when you are with the most wonderful human being on the planet, it's just, you know, it's, it's hard to top. But... Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm doing great, actually. I'm doing well, okay. I want to tell you something, Alex. Although you endured the unspeakable tragedy of losing your beloved partner so young in life, I hope it brings you some comfort to know that you immortalize joy in your wonderful book by introducing her to a whole new generation of fans. Oh, that's what I want, Harvey. I want people to remember her. I don't want, you know, her... I don't, I don't want, I'm, yes, she died, but I don't want her memory to die. I want more and more people to know about her and to appreciate her because she was so wonderful. I also want to say that you were such an incredibly devoted partner, best friend and caregiver to Joy. 
All I can say is that everybody should have an Alexis Hunter in their life. Oh, that's so sweet of you. Thank you so much, Harvey. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Alexis, for writing the book and for sharing your beautiful story with us and for giving us all the chance to feel like we got to know Joy Lansing. And thank you for taking the time to come on our show. Thank you so much, Harvey. It's, It's a real treat. Absolute treat. You are an angel. Thank you. Our guest has been author Alexis Hunter. My name is Harvey Brownstone. Thank you to our producer, Steve Silver. Thank you all for joining us. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all the great interviews on the Harvey Brownstone Interviews YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when new videos are posted.